Right. So Norma is going to be our host tonight together with um, a lady by the name of Claire that will arrive a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So I welcome Norma as our host tonight. And I'm bringing up the screen and then Norma's going to start. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, it's wonderful to be here. And um, thank you for having me, Sandy. Um, so I'm going to be speaking to you this evening about um, barter markets. And we've started barter markets in the KZN Midlands um, around about 2016, 2017. Um, where a lot of us had um, an abundance of, um, or excess of um, fresh produce or um, crafts or things like that, um, that we wanted to barter with each other. And um, yeah, it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, it's just creates such a community spirit. Um, people, there's, you know, there's no wastage. You don't have excess going to waste. Um, and um, together with Claire, we've um, launched the Maryvale Barter, which we will speak quite a bit about this evening. Um, and yeah, so basically we meet on the last Saturday of the month for an hour approximately from 1 to 2 p.m. and in Maryvale and um, people bring along whatever they have to barter with. So the whole um, idea is not to exchange cash and to, so you can bring along fresh produce, um, your um, jams, pickles, um, anything that you've um, baked, um, your breads, any produce that you've produced at home, um, even crafts, books, um, household items. Um, the list just carries on. I mean, people make um, soaps, all sorts of things and um, different um, what's the word um, <laughs> uh, different types of um, creams and poultices and um, all those you know um, we even um, barter things like compost organic compost um, and then we go on the list just goes on and on and on. The one lady who comes, um, she brings her books along and she specifically asks for um, non-perishable items to give to elderly folk who are in need. So um, it's absolutely wonderful how the community is just building this um, spirit of collaboration together and working together and getting to know each other and what each other's needs are and their strengths are and um yeah i mean we've even had for example i do permaculture workshops and i've bartered permaculture workshops for um a therapeutic massage session so um yeah you know it's the list is endless on as um, long as it's, well, we, you know, it's legal. So no drugs, prostitution, anything like that mm -hmm. um, being bartered. So, um, yeah, um, it's very, very exciting. 
and um, if anyone's got any questions, I don't know what more you want me to say about it. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, I'd happily answer them. And Claire, if you've joined us already, if you've got something to say, please put your hand up. Okay, Claire's not here yet. Okay. okay. Anyone else got a question so long? Uh, I, I have a question. Sure. Hello. Go Hello. For it. Yeah, uh, my question is with with fresh produce. Uh, <clears throat> I, I would like to know. Obviously, I'll, I'll have to engage the individuals concerned to growing it, growing the stuff. But what kind of regime has it been grown under? Are there? Is it organically grown perma, using permaculture techniques or? Are you using insecticides or or herbicides or any toxins like that? Um, yeah, presumably the individuals who are growing it will will be honest and and uh, advise me accordingly. Yes, um, well, with with our barters, um, we all ask that um, everyone is honest and um, we all. Um, Recording those of us who do grow um, are all doing organic, chemical free, using permaculture methods and principles. Um, and yes, so um, I'm very, very particular. I will not barter. For instance, um, I don't eat anything with chemicals in. So if somebody comes and wants to barter the vegetables, that I've grown organically and they are offering me things with sugar in and any other things that I don't eat, um, then I will not, um, I'll just say no thank you, um, I have no use for that. Um, so, um, and then, you know, in that way, um, Sometimes they may have a book that I need or would like or um, a clothing item or something like that. And then in the extreme is if they really, really want the organic vegetables, but you don't want or they have nothing to offer you, um, then you can come to an agreement and do a cash exchange, but um, it's preferred not to. The whole idea is not to use cash. Mm. Oh, thank you. That's great. Um, tell me, how did it all start? Um, it was just, a, you know, a a lot of like-minded people just getting together and chatting and we all started as groups of friends decided a lot of us are feeling the pinch financially and realized that we needed to make a plan and um, I know in particular with my group, my one group of friends, um, we would chat about it, how I, we remember when we were young um, and our moms and neighbors or our grannies and their friends would um, barter items back in the 70s, in the, in the 60s and 70s. And um, so we said, well, you know, let's, let's do this. Um, let's get, get a bit of trauma. <laughs> So a lot of us started bartering just on our own and we'd make our own arrangements to pick up or collect. And then it started expanding um, and people would then, um, so um, the first ones were done in, um, we started in Hulton and Howick and Nottingham Road area, but different people. And we joined those. 
um, and um, yeah, they meet on certain days of the month as well. And um, those two are strictly, well, there's no cash at those barters. Um, so yeah, um, and then we, for the barters, we um, permission was got from the local council to use a, a common area, a field in a suburban area or in the town um, to hold our barters. And then um, obviously because it's for such a short time, there's no store fees. We um, don't have to pay uh, the municipalities for um, using the field. Um, it's basically you barter, mingle a bit and chat and then leave. Um, so, and then one of the rules for the barters is that you leave the space with no trace. So you clean up after you um, and ensure that um, you leave the area nice and clean. So, yeah, that's um, pretty much how it all started. Um, tell me, how do you establish the worth of a product? How do you, how do people find their own worth and the, of the worth of their products and what they are willing to exchange? Has, have you come to some kind of um, understanding? You do. Um, it's, you know, it's, um, we don't really put a monetary value per se on, on items, um, but you sort of know what it's worth. Um, but it's, and yeah, the, the two parties who are bartering would um, decide what they're going to exchange um, for um, whatever they're wanting to exchange. And um, if you're not happy with it, then you just say that you're not happy, but there's never any um, animosity or arguing over it. Um, you know, people come to a, an agreement and um, yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it's just been so vibrant and so full of love and um, sense of community that, um, you don't really worry about the monetary side of it, you know. Um, and um, yeah, so, you know, often um, you might have some excess left of what you've harvested, and then you just say to people, well, please take this. And then they'll say, oh, but then you have to have this or, you know, and it's just such a lovely um, atmosphere. And, you know, sometimes some people have got nothing, they arrive with nothing to barter um, and they just come to ch check it out and see what we're doing. Um, and just to get to know what we, how it works. And um, yeah, we, we barter love and hugs and just a good conversation or somebody just needs to be uplifted and given some hope that, you know, there's always something that you can do. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what the barters are about. <laughs> Great. Okay, I see that uh, Claire has just arrived. Um, welcome, Claire. Thank you. I'm so sorry for being late. Uh, technical issues. No, apparently you've got a laugh as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Claire. <laughs> okay. Um, Right, I just want to quickly wish, welcome the other people. There's Tish and there's Sheila and Kathy and one more person. I don't want to, no, that's it. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Right, um, 
people, there's a quite a few of you here, I think, from um, Norma's area. Would you like to share your experiences and what, how this barter trade group has enriched your life and why, why other communities should adopt it for themselves? Clear. Okay. Er Go. Eerie silence, so I'll take the floor. <laughs> um, basically, we wanted to start it because of the spirit of generosity that it brings into people. You know, when you go to a place and people want to purchase, it becomes all about the money and that's it. Whereas with this, what we've discovered is when you, do, when you go and you actually have a day of bartering, mm -hmm. everyone becomes so generous because they suddenly feel they haven't paid enough um, for the item that they wanted and people and it really does just it's the most amazing incredible experience to be there where everyone's just being so generous and it's a day of making friends and and the things you come home with are just absolutely fantastic um, I mean the first our first bar today I co came home with strawberry plants books we came back with games um, salad spoons it's just, it's like Christmas. <laughs> Every bar today is just like a Christmas day. It's absolutely fantastic. And you meet such lovely, interesting people. So um, yeah, it's definitely not something that we want to dwindle, but rather something we want to grow just because it, it is an amazing experience. I like, it's like a lucky packet. We all love surprises. It, it sure is. <laughs> Great. Um, who's next? Please share with us. Let us learn from you. Tish. No, no. Okay. No, no, no. You know what? I haven't even started with bartering. I'm just here to listen and learn. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know what? You're welcome to always update us. I'd love that. Thanks. I don't really have much to barter at the moment, but I'm working on it. <laughs> don't worry. I've just planted some um, um, sugar snaps for the first time. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> so anyway. Right. Anyone else got questions? I think, Neil, you are muted. Oh. <laughs> uh, can you barter non-material goods? Can I barter my brain cells? Absolutely. <laughs> well, you we are more than brainy, so I think it would be a good idea. <laughs> we are, we're happy to be well, our last. Our last bar today, we had Carol bartering a joke, and that was absolutely fantastic. And the kids that were there just loved it because they'd brought citrus with. And so every joke she told, they were giving her oranges and lemons. It was just, it's fantastic. It really, like I say, it becomes a day of just generosity. So as long as it's legal, it can be bartered. Fantastic. <clears throat> um, someone's just asked, where about in Maryvale is the market? What would you suggest we bring with us as newcomers to the market? Anything. It's at the Anderson Road field and absolutely anything. I mean, when I told my mom about it, my parents live in Australia and I told her I was taking compost for our first one. She laughed at me and she said, who's just going to want horse poop? And, um, and you'd be surprised at how many people that that's actually what they're looking for. So mm -hmm. it can be absolutely anything that you have um, that you want to trade for something that you want more. Cool, cool. Um, right. Keep talking, keep talking. Tell us more. We want to learn. Yeah, well, like I said, it all started, um, I started it just as a WhatsApp group. And the idea started with bartering food. Um, and then it, it's just escalated from there. I went and spent some time with Norma and we realized that it needed to be more than just a WhatsApp group. You know, the WhatsApp group is great, but it's not the same as everyone actually coming together. And 
I mean, as I've mentioned the generosity side so many times, mm -hmm. as soon as everyone comes together, they almost feel a little bit like, oh, I haven't brought enough and I should have brought more. And, and it's just, it's incredible. And you can get such interesting things. Um, and I've come home with books. And I mean, the last bar today mm -hmm came home with apple cider vinegar and seeds and even sugar-free chocolate. It was really fantastic. So, um, and, and having met so many lovely people, I've spoken to Carol so many times um, on WhatsApp, but it was the first time I'd actually gotten to meet her face to face. And uh, yeah, so like I say, it's just an incredible experience. Even if there's only five people there to barter, it actually makes it almost more intimate that you get to know people a little bit better. Um, and, and everyone sort of builds up a little bit of confidence that they can say, well, I would really like that. Is there anything here that uh, in my bundle that you want? Um, I mean, the last day, one, the one lady had uh, secondhand clothes there and the, another person wanted a pair of shorts, but she didn't have anything that, that, that lady needed so she went and bartered with someone else to get what the lady did want and then went and got her pair of shorts so it it becomes a lot of fun it's just absolute absolute fun and it takes out that competitiveness where people are just looking for finance I mean mm -hmm. everybody is stressed about finance um especially with the prices and stuff going out sorry going up and you just have a moment where all of that gets put on hold and you can actually get stuff without having to spend money. You don't, even if you've got two cents to your name, you can still go and enjoy the day and come back with something that you want, something that you didn't even know that you wanted. So it, yeah, like I said, the only way I can describe it is, is Christmas once a month. It is fantastic. Yeah, I've got a question. Um, yes. Can you, like, just say hypothetically, our uh, get together is tomorrow. And um, I arrive there with a, an assortment of stuff, but I also have on a board what I want at, I don't know, at that particular gathering or at future gatherings. And then people can, sit, can look at the board and they can say, well, I've got that, that, and that. I'll bring it next time, kind of thing. Um, you could do that. Like I say, we try and keep it as casual as possible because a lot of groups, the admins are so, they rule with an iron rod. And if anyone steps out of line, they get booted out and yelled at. And we really try not to because it takes away the fun element. It takes away the, that element where people sort of relax and open up and get to know one another. You know, it takes away the good uh, the good fun that that's had um mm. what we normally do is if anyone's got specific needs like for example gilda does a lot of work where she's getting um stuff for the elderly and so she'll put on the whatsapp group ahead of time that mm. this is what she's looking for mm. and because we knew she was coming with books and dvds and games and stuff we went and got some tins of baked beans and some soaps and stuff it was the non-perishables non that she was looking for mm -hmm. and so it, it's maybe a better idea to put it on the group ahead of time mm -hmm. um what you've got and what you're looking for so that mm -hmm. people can come to the day prepared yes yeah makes good sense the other question is um so if i want to start a group in my area in waterfall uh, which lies between Kloof and Hillcrest. Um, I can, I need to connect with other people. Uh, yeah, and form a group, preferably people from this communities for South Africa and form mm. a group and then find a location and yeah, start the process. Yes, and it's quite a, it's quite a simple process. But it obviously does take work promoting it and letting people know what, you, what it, you're doing and what the rules and regulations are like. For us, our biggest rule is just as long as it's legal, nothing illegal, please. Mm -hmm. um, and then to get sort of a centralized um, public place is fantastic because it just mm -hmm. helps with logistics for people to get there. 
And what I did is I went to our ward councillor, Kate van Rensburg, and just said, this is what we're planning to do. Can we have permission to use the park? And she said, absolutely, not a problem. Um, so as long, as long as you've got the permissions in place, um, and it's really not such a big deal because, because it's not a money-making thing, they tend to be a lot, more, a lot more open to say, go for it. You know, mm -hmm. it's for the public to enjoy. Um, in, enjoy the park, have fun, just please don't litter. And what we, te what we do is uh, every time we have a day, I take sacks and we do a litter run while we're there just to make sure that we've actually left it in better condition than what it, what we, what it was when we arrived. Mm -hmm. um, so that the municipality is very happy with us using it. And I very much doubt they would ever turn around and say no, simply because of the condition that we always leave it in. Yes. And a third question is what, what kind of policy do you have? I mean, your rules and regulations, is it possible to share those? Um, basically it's, it's bartering. So when we're not selling, um, mm. So no stalls, no fees. Nobody's charged for going there for the day. Nobody mm -hmm. is selling. I mean, you will have a few people arrive that sort of go, I have nothing to barter except for cash. That's fine. But next time, bring something with and have a barter, you know, and we just try and encourage it that way. But the biggest rule is just nothing illegal. Mm. What about the gray areas? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, fortunately, we've, we're in a fantastic community, so there aren't, the people around here, there aren't too many grey areas, um, you know, so because it's a family day, please don't bring, bring booze with, um, mm -hmm. it, it, needs, it needs to be good, clean fun, so mm -hmm. that's, that's probably the biggest thing, and we find a lot of the people who do want to indulge in the not so legal side they they're not really interested in something like this simply because they're not going to walk away with cash mm -hmm. absolutely wow, so um and i mean when you're talking about the gray areas i presume you're talking about something like cannabis yeah all of those people all of those people are looking Magic for mushrooms, cash for their products cannabis Oh no, but magic mushrooms are com completely illegal. And oh. we, yeah, so that's completely illegal. And with cannabis, the sale of cannabis is mm. illegal. Um, mm -hmm. CBD products is legal, but the sale of actual cannabis is illegal. Unless mm -hmm. of course you've got a license for it and the people who've got mm -hmm. licenses want to export. They're not interested in coming to a market. So just having said, um, as long as it's legal, kind of roots out the people who are wanting to come and sell space brownies, for example. Yeah. And they're not making the brownies to give away. They are making those to make money. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I say is the fact that we say no cash, it does root out a lot of those issues. Cool. That's, that's a good guidelines. I like that. Very clear. Mm. Right. Um, has anyone else got a question for Norma or Claire? Norma, go for it. Okay, well, another thing that I could add is, um, yeah, as Claire said, it's great. Um, we encourage people to actually post on the group, on the WhatsApp group, um, what they'd be bringing um, to the market, which gives people an idea and people actually start saying, oh, I definitely want some of your, um, your cream clay or um, I want some of Gilda's box. And we, you know, so we already get an idea of what we, how much we need to take and what we need to take. And, and then often people can't make it for some reason if they have another commitment on that day. And that's fine because then what they can do is just message the person 
who's um, advertised on the group what they have and say, I'd really like to barter with you privately. Um, could we make arrangements to meet up during the week or on another day? Um, and then otherwise we'll see you at next month's barter if you could keep it. So, um, yeah. So, you know, we can barter any day um, and then, and even you'll see sometimes on the group, people would will ask for advice on something related to the barter um, or they're looking for something. Has anyone got it? And yeah, so it's, it's wonderful. It really builds a sense of community. And um, we've made so many wonderful connections with people um, and we all su supporting each other in different ways. Um, and they've, haven't just become friends, they've become family. So, okay, um, Jean, um, you can, anyone who wants to join the WhatsApp group, um, if um, you've received, whichever platform you receive the um, invite to, um, Jean, I'll, I'll message you um, and, I'll add you on to um, send you the link for the group. But anyone who needs, wants to join our group, um, the Maryvale group, is welcome to um, just contact me or Claire um, on the platform that they've seen the ad. And then um, we can add you or send you the link. Right, thank you and very I, much. Um, Mandy's Sorry. got a question. Um, yeah, I just wanted to know how many people normally come to barter? Have you, do you have any idea? Is it like 10, 20? How many people actually do come? Our first one we had, I think there were four or five of us bartering. And the, the second time, because we've only had two actual physical days, despite the fact that the group has been going for such a long time um and having the actual physical days was norma's idea and just the, the best thing ever um and yeah the last time i think we had about seven people so it it's it's growing which is fantastic so i wouldn't you know if you're in a big center you might be expect more people but in a small community like ours um that's quite quite a lot of support considering that both days that we've picked so far they've been huge other things on the go like the last one we did on heritage day which wasn't the best plan in the world but um we hadn't checked the calendar prior setting the date okay great wow that's awesome thank you no only a pleasure And what I would also like to throw out is for anyone who is wanting to start a barter group in their area, mm. please, please give feedback because I've also got Trendsetters Media and it, we really do enjoy just sharing the positive things happening in the communities. And we'd love to, whichever area you're in, um, actually be able to, to share it because it's a mindset that I believe more of us need to adopt. Mm. Um, you know, like, like I was saying, financially, this country is seriously in the dwang. And we don't always have money to go and get things. Um, I mean, the last bar today, I took, I took quite a lot of kale with as well and other stuff out of my veggie garden. And the amount of people that were actually quite excited because they had an abundance of other things, but they didn't really have the money to go and buy fresh produce. And so... So we were able to get things that we wanted and they were actually able to go home and eat. So, which is also why we don't limit it because not everyone has a veggie garden at home. So if you, so please, if anyone is going to actually go and start this, please let, you know, just feed the information back. Um, it's important to actually get it out there so that people, it, it really helps people to survive in these tough, tough times. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll definitely be starting one in the Kloof, uh, Forest Hills, Waterfall, 
Hillcrest area. <clears throat> oh, that's absolutely fantastic. It is. And if you need any assistance and with starting it up, you're welcome to speak to us about it. Um, we'd be oh, more than you. happy to assist you. Thank you. Mm. And I'm going to see what I can do in the um, in my area, in the Helderberg Basin in Cape Town. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, has this initiative of yours encouraged other, well, so the people that attend to grow more of their own produce or encourage the community to grow more of their own? Oh, definitely, absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, I've had um, a lot of people because I mean, I, I take an assortment of things. I take my organically grown veggies, plus whatever um, I don't need anymore that's in my home. And um, and you meet people and then, you know, they start asking and questions and wanting to know how they can grow their own. And yeah, so we have, like you, I said, we, we don't just form bonds as friends, but you end up becoming like a family. We, um, you know, and some of them, for instance, can't afford to come to my workshop. So, um, and then I say, well, you know, what can you offer? So I've actually got some, um, somebody from our barter who um, is just so passionate about wanting to learn how to grow organically and using permaculture principles. And he's coming to do some volunteer work in my garden um, to learn how to do that. And um, in that way, he's going to be doing the workshops as well, but um, by working with me. And um, yeah, so um, this is, there's definitely um, people are waking up and realizing they need to plant their own. And when you hear the feedback too, it's like when you get a message saying, oh, I've never eaten um, an avocado that tastes so good or spinach that tastes so good um, as from what I've got from your garden. Um, you know, how do you do it? And we want to do that. How do we get ours like that? So, um, yeah, it's it does. It encourages people. It definitely does. That is the best part of it all. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, Tish, says she's a Pilates instructor and she can um, also start bartering. So that's quite exciting. Um, and um, then there is Flory in Johannesburg. Um, he wants to know if there's any, do you know of any groups in Johannesburg doing this? Um, uh, we don't offhand, um, but um, I have got a few contacts up in the Johannesburg area, okay. which I can ask. Um, and find out if they, um, I know they were talking about do, starting one up last month, but I just haven't been in contact with them with life being rather busy. So um, let me check that and then I can put it onto the group um, wherever there are different barter markets that we've heard of. Well, we, we, I'm willing to create a list of barter markets um, as you give me as you give me the information, and we can even put it on our website. Okay. To try and promote no, this whole initiative. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely do that. Great. Okay. Right. Um, Margie, welcome. Um, do you have any questions? No. Okay. All right. Um, if there's any, yes, there you are. Yeah. No, nothing. Thanks. Just listening. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, is there anyone else with questions, or um, shall we call it a night and just say thank you to Claire and Norma for talking to us about this 
very important subject. I think this is also a subject of personal growth because we know our own worth. We know we learn more about giving and receiving. Um, so this is actually quite a valuable exercise to do for personal growth. Um, once a week on a Thursday night, 7 p.m., same link every week, we have a meeting on a good subject and they're going to get better. Um, for, pers for communities, anything to do with communities and community development on some level, things that are super practical like this. Um, and that's just because we are the communities for South Africa and we are encouraging you to become self-sufficient and also to identify the problems in your community and to get business plans together for the needs in your community and mm -hmm. get them ready so they can be funded to restore your community and your community's needs and the people of your community. So that's yeah. who we are, the Community for South Africa. And I would just like to thank you for joining I, our information. I have a question in about chat. that. <laughs> yes, Neil. Um, well, how's this funding going to work? I mean, who's going to provide this money? Where's it going to come from? Is it clean money? Is it, yeah. Yes, it's clean money. It's very clean money. It's probably the cleanest money we'll ever receive in history. It's coming directly from the global repository um, and all the, the global um, deep state organizations are being How do they generate their money? Through the Global Asset Fund. There's been a lot of money that has been put away for many years that was never used. Um, one of them is from, um, one of the sources is from the Ways and Means Commission that was meant for free education and free healthcare globally, for instance. So there's, and the, the assets are being reinvested on a daily basis. But where the money, we don't ask our bank uh, manager where he gets these money from. Um, we just need to focus on restoring our communities and getting our infrastructure sorted out because most of us are sitting with potholes, with sewer systems that aren't working, um, really bad quality water, with fluoride and all kinds of rubbish in it. So that's what our focus needs to be, better schools for our children, that we are then not dumbed down in gigantic classes and more of that kind the of education thing. system. Yeah. A Shocking, lot of, actually. Yeah. So we can, I've got a whole lot of videos on our YouTube channel that talk on different subjects. But um, if you want to go to our website, you can actually get the information from there. It is www.communitiessa.coza. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. I wish you all a beautiful evening. Thank you again, Norma and Claire. Mm -hmm. Only a pleasure, and thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, and again, thank you to everyone thank you for so joining. Much. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.